Madness. March Madness. Tournament of 64 Bourbon. Tournament of 64. <laughs> Today's episode of Bourbon Barrel Talk and Bracket Challenge is brought to you by Matt Wagner with Oxenus Partners Wealth Management. Matt and his team specialize in strategic investment and financial planning. With over 70 years of combined experience, they will find a solution that is best for your investment needs. Call Matt today, 812-725-8649. That's 812-725-8649. And welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. Yeah, I want to say a special thanks to Matt as well because he sponsored this actual bracket and everything we're putting together today was brought together by his uh, generosity. Absolutely. We, we really appreciate Oxenus Partners and Matt for uh, getting involved with Bourbon Barrel Talk and helping us through this uh, bracket challenge. So Toby, uh, let's dive in, man. I, I got to be honest with you, you know, through this whole bracket challenge on the bourbon, the 64 tournament bourbon madness thing that we started i'm absolutely just floored at the number of picks that have been completely just off the wall from where i thought they'd be well right off the bat there's two or three of the one and two seeds that are they're gone they're just we're we're currently at the sweet 16 so we went through round one and two and and a couple of the round one upsets we can start here at their east region just just to give us a place to start all the ones that i really thought was going to come in like the pappy 23 went on to uh to the next round mick uh, i put mixers toasted and uh i still want to punch you for this match <laughs> and weller 107 <laughs> together um but weller 107 came out ahead which is not unexpected especially considering how popular um this uh normal daily drinkers yeah i feel like people just really really enjoy weller just in general and owa let's be honest is just one of those that just kill it as far as you know the market goes where people just they're they're stockpiling as many as they can and they just really love this bourbon and this was one of the brackets where the 2c went uh got taken down wild turkey master's keep was um, definitely one of the unicorns that we were talking about gets taken out by four rows of single barrel right but but i'll be honest with you this was the one 215 that i thought was going to happen even though we had multiple of them going down Mm -hmm. Because four rows of single barrel, I mean, I understand most of them are store picks or, or things to that nature, but it's just, when I think of a single barrel, I think of, you know, foolproof, single barrel, awesome action. It's actually what we're sipping on today. We're we're sipping on an OESK, you know, Rose Banger, um, four roses edition. So it's, it's just a solid pour. Yeah, it's very good. Um, I'm also a little surprised. Um, Kentucky Owl got taken out, but not completely surprised. 1792 foolproof is is a legit bourbon. So, it, it's it, even though it was it was a it was 11 seed, it probably in most people bracket may have been a little bit higher. Yeah, it, it in the way we you know laid this out, you know, it made a lot of bourbons that were in those 12, 13, 14 seats that were just really solid bourbons overall. Now, are you surprised at all that Blanton's didn't make a, a better run at it? They didn't even get out of the first round. You know, I, I do, but in some aspects, when you look at who they were paired up against, I mean, anybody that's ever had the Elijah Craig 18, I mean, it's just such a solid pour. Um, so I, the only thing that that comes off by this one that, that surprises me is the fact that Blanton's is more readily available than, than the EC 18. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I mean... It's becoming more and more available, it seems like, because I've seen a lot of pictures over the last couple weeks on all these bourbon groups of people being able to get a hold of it, and we had a couple bottles the other day. Right. Um, let's go down to the West region. Um, there, there's a, a couple big upsets here. There's a, a 512 upset, which is since, tends to be a little bit uh, uh, more common in the, in the NCAA brackets. We wasn't sure how it was going to turn out here, but we got Michter's, uh, Michter's 10 versus a Weller 12. I know there's a lot of Michter's fans out there, and the Michter's 10, M10, is some of their most favorite. So I'm a little surprised that we didn't have a little bit more um, competition there with the uh, um, Weller 12. And Weller 12, almost, I mean, it wasn't a unanimous pick, but it, it was very high when we went back and looked at the numbers. Mm. 
Um, the one that kind of, I guess, surprised me more than anything else was the, <laughs> the 215 seed here. I mean, we had Oak Carter 27, which is basically the one of the biggest unicorns I've ever tasted or had versus Makers 46. Now, and nothing to knock Makers 46, perfectly good pour, but... I mean, dang, Oak Carter, you know, 27 being a two seed and getting knocked off by Makers 46 was just a complete, just blew my mind. No, I wasn't surprised at all with them. Old Forester 1910 pulling up a little bit of an upset here. Um, and I, I still think the the one that I picked to take the whole tournament is still in with the Pappy 15. I, it went ahead and knocked off uh, the Evan, William, Evan Williams single barrel which is a very solid daily drinker. So it was definitely something that I was worried about when I, when we put these together. Yeah. And, 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 and people will realize that, especially once we get to the second bracket, second side of the bracket there. Um, if you want to go ahead and we'll flip over to, uh, I guess, what is it? The East or the South region. And that'll yeah. give us a little bit more indicator as far as where we're at and everything else, but looking at, Oh, sorry, the Midwest. Yeah. So the Midwest, we had uh, Michter's 25 versus the Lee St. Clair, the 116 seed there. Um, that was, I mean, Lee St. Clair's a great pour, but Michter's 25 is a unicorn, and it really, you know, just handed that one uh, pretty easily. Um, but there are a couple of things out here that I was just kind of like, wow, really? And I can't, you know, can't really, can't really see that this one really went too far out of the out of the spectrum of what we, the way we seeded them other than Henry McKenna made a pretty big upset over uh, Bl- the Blom brothers, old fangled Notter bourbon. Well, with Henry McKenna, I know that that's won a lot of awards and, and that's one of those ones that all of a sudden is becoming uh, almost impossible to find anymore. You can't just go to any liquor store or Myers or whatever and pick up McKenna anymore. Um, a year ago you could. Right. Yeah. So I think that that's picking up a lot of steam. So yeah, that was the only real upset in um, in the Midwest bracket in round one. Right. With the rest of that in round one, you had Heaven Hill twenty seven. You had the Wild Turkey seventeen year George T Stag, Elijah Craig twenty um, three, um, E H Taylor four green and Weller foolproof. You know, line out that side. Um, on down to the South region, we had a couple of other big upsets down here, which I was kind of, you know, just shocked about. Um, but I, 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 I think I texted you a few days ago and said I thought there was some tomfoolery going on, and I think I might have seen a little bit of uh, what's going on with that today. So, uh, but big congrats to the big knockoffs. We got Old Fifty Five beating William Larue Weller, which was a huge shocker. Um, and then I think. Um, when I look at the other one that I, to me, it wasn't really, it was an upset, but it wasn't an upset. It was Elmer T. Lee beating the Stag Jr. Yeah, I mean, it was an 8-9. It was two, one of the ones that was a toss-up to me. Um, actually, you could have probably seated that either way. You could have put a, uh, Elmer T. Lee as the as the 8 and the Stag Jr. as the 9. It could have it'd been a coin flip there. So, But, yeah, the the old 55 knocking off the uh, William Lou Weller is definitely uh, – um, the biggest upset on this side of the bracket, and and we're going to start seeing some of the other big dogs start falling in the, in the second round. Um, this first round had certainly some big upsets, some things that surprised us when we put this together. We didn't necessarily expect those to uh, be the case, but hey, that's that's what this is all about. We want the people to be able to vote, figure out what they like, and and, and see what goes on. So let's stay in the South region. Let's let's look again at what that looks like. So, you know, we had Michter's 20 versus Elmer T. Lee, the Lot B versus Old Forster Birthday Bourbon, Old Fitz 15 versus Pappy 20, and then we had Old 55 versus Old Carter 12-year that came up out of that bracket. Um, and the winners were Old 55, Old Fitz um, 15, the Old Forster Birthday Bourbon, and the Michter's 20. So once again, Old 55 makes a massive upset over uh the old carter 12 year yeah i'm surprised about that one but the the other one that really surprises me is the lot b getting knocked off by the birthday bird see that doesn't surprise me old fitz beating pappy 20 was more of a shocker to me yeah that's that's big too i mean because both of those i mean you talk to anybody they want to fa- they want a pappy 20 they would uh, certainly want a birthday bourbon, but they also want that lot B. Yeah. So those are some of the ones that you think that everybody wants. But um, I, I was a little surprised, about, definitely surprised with the old 55, but they're, they're coming on strong. Absolutely. So then we move back up to the Midwest. We've got um, basically Michter's 25 versus Weller Foolproof, Henry McKenna versus the E.H. Taylor Four Green, George T. Stagg versus the Elijah Craig 23, 
and Wild Turkey 17 versus the Heaven Hill 27. So we we had a couple of upsets here. Um, Weller Foolproof took down Michter's 25, and I think that's more or less just because most people, they've just never tried Michter's 25. I mean, if you tried Michter's 25, there's no way you pick Weller Foolproof over that. Yeah, it, but, I mean, this this is the first number one seed going down. Um, again, yeah, if, if you had both of them next to each other, you give somebody an option. They're not going to pick the uh, foolproof over the Mictors 25. It's just not going to happen. Right. And then uh, the other big upset in this side was uh, Wild Turkey 17 taking down the the Heaven Hill 27. So, you know, Heaven Hill 27 to me is one of those borderline unicorn bottles. And, you know, for and, and not that Wild Turkey 17 isn't a great pour. I, I really enjoy it. But, like, man, it's just I was shocked to see this one fall out the other way. Um, the other two were exactly where I thought they were. It'd be George T. Stagg as a three seed and E. H. Taylor as a four seed for the four green. So those kind of fell right into place exactly where I thought they would. Yeah, I agree. Um, on over back to I think it's the East region. Yeah, the East region. This is where another number one seed goes down, and um, this is one of the ones that probably surprised me more so than any of the ones that is, is the Weller 107 knocking off Pappy 23. Now, and it didn't surprise me because if you put two of them together and you had a drink and say, I like this one over that one, it's because Pappy 23 is like the unicorn of unicorns. That's the one that people want. They go out of their way to get. They will wait in line all day long to get it. Um, but I think what happened is when you do try it, you realize it's a little underwhelming. It's really oaky. It's really strong. It's not something that you'd want to drink on a daily basis. So maybe that's why the Weller 107 took that win. That, that, that's probably the exact reason why. And then it might also be the <laughs> fact that some people have never tried the, the Pappy 23. So that that could be a double-edged sword. Um, the rest of it kind of fell in exactly where I thought it would. I mean, four rows of single barrel. I, I, I predicted this upset on my bracket versus the Elijah Craig 18. Um the 1792 foolproof versus the blade and blow 22. I actually prefer the foolproof over the blade and blue 22, but um, you know, not everybody else does. And then four roses limited edition, small batch is uh, just a, a great pour overall. I've not had a bad year of that. Yeah. I, I, I still think that the blade and bow 22 is, is, is a better pour than the uh, 1792 foolproof, but it is what it is. I mean, this is the way it turned out and th- these are the ones that got to go moving on. So finally, in the South region or the West region, <clears throat> we had Eagle Rare seventeen versus Weller twelve, Booker's thirtieth versus the Old Rip Van Winkle ten year, the Old Forester Presidential Choice versus Pappy fifteen, Old Forester nineteen ten, and the Makers forty six. So uh, this one came out once again. I mean, just upsets galore. Weller twelve takes down Eagle Rare seventeen. Um, Mc, uh, Makers forty six takes down you know the nineteen four the nineteen ten old Forester and then uh, the other two kind of fell exactly where we thought they'd fall or at least close to. You had a five seat in the Booker's thirtieth you know upset and I guess in some capacity the old Rip and then uh, the Pappy fifteen come out on top on that one. Yeah, I, I was very surprised at the Weller twelve, but it's probably like you said, not a lot of people have tried Igor Air 17. It's not something that, that's readily available. And if you do see it, it's $1,000 on the shelf, right? if not more. Um, but the one I think I'm more surprised than anything is Makers 46 uh, pulling out the 1910. Not because um, Makers for, there's anything wrong with Makers 46. It's just 1910, such a great pour, and it's available everywhere. So you, right. can, you can go in the store and get it. Yeah. Everybody's probably tried it. It's not a high proof, so it's... It's something a lot of people can drink. Um, I, I, I'm almost wondering if this isn't a price point play. You think? It could be. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe not. And, you know, that's that's one of those things. So my question is, let's go through the bracket where we sit today. Let's let's see you pick the next round, and I'm going to do the same thing. And uh, let's let's have a little discussion around that and then see if we can kind of predict where these numbers are going to fall moving forward. So if hmm. we look at – Antique 107 versus Four Roses Limited Edition Small Batch. I have to go with Weller 107 since it's pulled two big upsets already. Um, I, I can't imagine, or at least two upsets altogether, I can't imagine it's going to get knocked off by Four Roses. I, I think I agree with you. Um, I mean, Antique 107 is probably my number three favorite pour, so, I mean, I would vote for it in this situation. Um, but there are a lot of fans of Four Roses, which is why I, 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 I'm 
almost leaning. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take Antique 107 on this one, but on the next one, I am going to take the Four Rows of Single Barrel over the 1792 Full Proof. I would agree with that as well. So you got a 15 seed making the Elite Eight, which is because this is a Sweet 16 right here. So um, Four Rows of Single Barrel making the Elite Eight, passing up Four Rows as limited edition just because of the way it's seeding. All right. Um, sometimes that's the way it happens when you, you get an easier route because of people getting knocked off in front of you. Right. And then we got Weller 12 versus the Booker's 30th, and then Pappy Van Winkle 15 versus the Maker's 46. I, I think this is where uh, Maker's 46 is going to get taken down. I All think right. Pappy 15 is – I still think that it's going to win the whole thing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I expect uh, Maker's 46 to get knocked down here. I, I, I think I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Pappy on this one and, and – I think Weller 12 is going to beat Booker's 30th, even though I, I, I don't get it, but I think it's going to happen. I don't disagree with you. I think that's going to happen, too. So you're going to see Weller 12 against Pappy 15. And that's going to be a, a, a neat or entertaining, um, I guess, um, thought process when you really look at that one. So on the other side of the bracket in the south region, we got Weller Full Proof going against E.H. Taylor Full Grain. Um I, I got to go with Weller foolproof. I think that that's what's going to it's the eight seed is going to take the win here. I'm going to go against you. I think we're going to go. I think we'll see four grain come out of this one, and then I think George T. Stag will top uh, Wild Turkey 17. I agree with that as well. Um, that I think uh, the Gorgie T. Stag is the uh, <laughs> one of the lowest seeds remaining. That's going to after this round will still be standing up. You, you, you may very well be right. Um, and look at the bottom bracket. We've got Mickers 20 versus Old Forester Birthday Bourbon and Old 55 versus the Old Fitz 15. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, um, even though Mickers is a better pour, um, just because I, I'm just watching what the crowd's doing. I'm just trying to predict their thought process. And then um, I, I think Old 55 might, might take out Old Fitz 15. I don't disagree with you on either one of those. I think both of those, both of those are going to happen. People like that birthday bourbon. They like the nostalgia of it. They like being able to hold it in their hand saying that, oh, I'm going to open this when my kids turn 18 or whatever the case may be. Um, they're going to, I think that's going to push ahead of Mictor's 20. And, and it, unless all of a sudden the, the folks that's been voting don't vote anymore, I think the old 55 is going to come out ahead. Yeah. So as it stands then with the, the Elite Eight, if, if, if we are correct, it we'll be looking at Old 55 versus the Old Forster Birthday Bourbon, Gorgie Tea Stag versus um, we had a split decision on Four Grain or Weller Full Proof. Well, we can call it Four Grain. Okay. And then um, we had Four Rows of Single Barrel versus Antique 107 and Pappy 15 versus... Um, well or 12 well or 12 so yeah i mean i still think i i have a feeling that pappy 15 is going to come out um end up making it to the the final four here out of that bracket i i have a feeling that weller 107 will probably pull out the victory here and um i think that on the other side i think that um gorgie t stag will come out ahead in the final four out of that bracket and i believe Old 55 is going to come out ahead on that one based on what we're saying. You may very well be right. I will be shocked if Old 55 makes it into the Final Four, but, uh, you know, they always say the old Cinderella slipper. You never know what you're going to get. Would And I think it's kind of funny um, just in the last day or so because um, this, is, this is being recorded on Tuesday the – was it the 18th? 17th. 17th. St. Patrick's Day. Come Saint on. Patrick. So we're going to release this tomorrow. So it's going to come out on Wednesday morning. Right. So when people are listening to this, it's going to be uh, just uh, the same day. But today, how many times, what do we see today on the, the bourbon groups? That two different people put out brackets like this? Yeah, absolutely. People are looking to put out brackets and talk about these things. And um, they've got a little bit different caveat to it, which I, I, I like their idea. You know, this was something that we came up with, you know, a couple of months ago and decided we wanted to do something to kind of celebrate bourbon and, and March Madness all at the same time. But uh, I think one of them were, was going to do pours under 100 bucks, and then I can't remember what the other one was. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But the good part about this one is 
folks, you listen, you you vote, you come to the website, you vote on the, the round, you get entered into the drawing. And as of right now, um, what are some of the prizes? I mean, we got a four ounce pour of a uh, old rip. We've got a bottle of E.H. Uh, e. Taylor small batch. We've got a bottle of uh, four uh, rolling forks rum, and we've got the the fortu- the fortuitous union baseball cap, which says F.U. on it. Um, we're also adding, just recently adding, a bottle of Old Grand Ed 114. All right. Well, heck, I, mean, I didn't so, even realize we added that on. So we we have certainly four or five bottles in which people would like to have. I mean, right. it's not, it, they're, they're not um, things that they couldn't buy on their own or whatever, but I don't think there's anything, maybe not the, the, the rolling rock is going to be a little bit more unique. Rolling than, fork. Or rolling fork, yeah. Um, so thanks to them for, they actually donated the bottle to us um, with uh, Tanner Wathen from um, the Rolling Fork Distillery. Um, that was amazing for him to do that and provide that FU hat. Um, F you, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think that uh, the good thing about this bracket compared to everybody else's is, is that, one, it's free, and, two, you're getting some great prizes. I mean, this these are these are amazing prizes for, for just a, a, a free version of a bracket that we decided to put together just because of March Madness, even though March Madness was canceled. Right. We didn't know that at the time. but it, We really <laughs> didn't. So sad. Because we were going to take one of those bottles and actually give it away on a, on an actual basketball bracket, but then all that went to hell in a handbasket recently. Yeah, so I mean, that's how we got the additional bottle for this one. So um, I think folks who, um, who listen to this podcast um, – that um that also goes on and votes vote every round vote um right now we're on round three which is sweet 16 right go ahead and vote on elite eight final four in the championship game so we want to know who you like best for these bourbons we want to know um we want the folks from old 55 to come in and 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 keep putting out those votes for them to to move on because um i've not tried old 55 it's not a it's not a uh, a low end product, so it's not something that that um, it, it could be as good as as um, as advertised with this bracket. Right. Yeah. And and like I said, it's it's one of those things where I'm I, I'm surprised only because of the fact that I didn't think that many people knew of Old Fifty Five, um, but it, it's definitely a good solid pour. Yeah. So what um, what's going to happen now is. Um, we're going to have another review session like this, um, maybe in another 10 days or two weeks when, when round, uh, round three and four get completed, um, kind of see what the final four in the championship game will probably look like. Um, but what I want to make sure that everybody understands, just go out and vote. It's free. Get your free bottles. We will deliver them to you. Um, I think the disclaimer was what two hundred miles. Two hundred miles of Louisville, Kentucky. That way, that because so we can actually give them to you. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a, I mean, a fantastic prize, and you never know. One thing that we did forget on the prize is a little small uh, taster size of the. Uh, um, I can't think of the name of the the hot the bourbon hot sauce. Oh, the Kentucky. Tuxican or whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> Hot sauce. So we're going to be able to provide that as well. Um, uh, again, I want to thank Matt from Oxenus Partners who sponsored the bracket. I think this is a wonderful of them to be able to allow us to put this on and, and be able to have such great prizes. Yep, absolutely. We greatly appreciate Matt. And, and like, and I will say, you know, from, from experience, you know, if, if you're looking for a financial advisor that, you know, wants to take care of you and you want them to look out for your best interest, you know, Matt's a great dude to talk to. And especially with times like this where the, this, <laughs> this coronavirus is killing everything, <laughs> including all our fun. Yeah. Um, More uh, importantly, our fun, right? Yeah. Um, I can I can live with losing a little money every now and then. <laughs> but if you don't want to lose that money and you want to work with somebody who can help you at least regain some of maybe some of your losses, that I'm sure Matt can help Call you out. Call Matt. He can definitely help you out with that. Well, I enjoyed this today, Scott. Um, was there anything else you want to talk about before we I wrap think it up? that's it. Bourbon Barrel Talk. That's www.bourbonbarreltalk.com. That's where you vote. You can check us out on Facebook. You can check us out on Instagram, which is at Bourbon Barrel T. And then um, we also have Twitter as well. So uh, just check us out. We're all there. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you can also email us at bourbonbarreltalk at gmail.com. This is Scott and Toby signing off.